everybody. Doug Mechanic here from Acolyting. Welcome to the Dot2 webinar today. Just a reminder, we're not going to be taking any questions today during the webinar. We will follow up with some future webinars here in the near future, uh, doing a little bit more technical things where you can actually ask questions to the tech support team um, specific to the console. Today, what we're going to do is a little bit of overview on the system, and uh, yeah, we'll get started. Everybody ready? Great. Okay, uh, so today what we're going to talk about is the DOT2 control system provided by MA Lighting. Uh, DOT2 system offers eight universes of control, and what we're looking at right here is the DOT2 core. The DOT2 core is your base model for the DOT2 control system. DOT2 core offers six executor faders, uh, 12 executor buttons, a static Q stack, programming panel, two internal screens. If you want to add on to the DOT2 core, you can. We have uh, fader wings and we have executor button wings. The fader wing adds an additional eight executor faders and 16 executor buttons, whereas the button wing will add an additional 48 executor buttons. Now, if you're sitting there saying to yourself, you know, the six faders here is just not going to be enough and I know I'm going to always need more faders, there's also another console called the DOT2 XLF. And what the XLF does is it takes the fader wing and it combines it into the same box, giving you those additional faders. There's also a console called the XLB, which would attach the button wing into the same box, giving you an XLB or an XLF. Now, these fader wings are pretty cool. They connect over the network uh, via plug and play. There is no IP addresses needed. You simply plug in a network cable to the wing, go through your network switch and into the DOT2 console. The console actually recognizes it. You connect it in. Once again, something we're going to get into a little bit later in some future webinars where we'll do some of those technical things on how to actually connect these systems together. But take my word for it, very cool system. What we have down here is the DOT2 four port node. That adds an additional four DMX ports into the system. And you can also use that with the DOT2 on PC. Speaking of on PC, MA policy, free software. All of their products come with free software, which is great, especially in the DOT2 system because you can download what's called DOT2 on PC. DOT2 on PC is the offline editor for the DOT2 console. Being offline, you can program, you can update queues, you can do a lot of fixes without actually having to be in front of your rig. Now, if you're not in front of your rig, we also offer another piece of free software called DOT2 3D. DOT2 3D is, once again, offline software. It's a pre-visualization software for free. You can use DOT2 on PC with DOT2 3D and actually program your whole show. You just can't actually output any real DMX until you have a DOT2 core, a DOT2 console, or a DOT2 node connected in the system. Now that on PC system, once again, if you download that free software, you can actually network it in with the DOT2 core or DOT2 XL and actually use it as a full tracking backup console for the real physical console. Pretty neat, Not, once again, doesn't cost you any money. Just download it and connect it into the system. We'll get into all that in a future uh, technical webinar, just kind of give you an overview of how that works. Uh, let's talk about the back panel of the DOT2 core. So back here what we have are four DMX ports, five pin XLR, a LTC in for SMPTE time timecode, mostly used for touring applications, but you can use it for anything that you need. A little light connector, every console ships with one little light. An analog remote connector, serial pin cable here, where we can actually uh, trigger remotes using analog control. MIDI in, MIDI out. Once again, MIDI timecode if you want. We can also use MIDI notes to fire additional executors if we want to. A DMX in port that's receiving DMX values using that as an external remote and an audio in port. We also have here a DVI-D port for one external monitor. All DOT2 consoles support one external monitor. And there's USB ports right next to that because if you want that monitor to be a touchscreen, you can. Just simply plug into the USB port. DOT2 will understand it's a touchscreen and you can go ahead and start using it. You can also plug other things into the USB ports. Um, for example, I have a keyboard connected here. You could plug in a mouse if you wanted to. You could put in a USB stick to save your shows. Whatever's good for you. The Ethernet connector, once again, that's for connecting the external fader wings or the on-PC software or the DOT2 3D software. And you can also output network protocols from that port. And then to the right of that, we have uh, our IEC, locking IEC cable, once again, provided with a console to power up the desk. Okay, let's take a look back here at the front panel again. What I'm going to show you is one of the 
my favorite features about the console. I'm going to kind of walk you through how it all works, but what we're going to actually do is start from a blank slate. So I'm going to go to backup and I'm going to hit new show. I'm going to go ahead and label the show dot to uh, test. And the console will always ask us, should we save our show? Why not? There's no reason not to ever save your show because that one time that you don't save your show, you are severely going to be upset. So let's go ahead and just say save show. And now we're here in a blank slate. From a blank slate, the console will actually guide you through how to set it up. There is no need to search through the manual. The manual is actually appearing over here on my uh, external wing if you really wanted to read through it. But my main control monitor here is actually going to walk you through all of those steps. So right now it says your show file is empty. You'll probably need to patch some lights to get started. And in order to do that, go ahead and press the setup key and then pre press the patch and fixture schedule key. So I'm going to go ahead and hit setup patch and fixture schedule. That walks you through, once again, where do we start from? So here it says there are no fixtures in the show file. Click add new fixtures to get started. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit add new fixtures. Once again, if we walk through these steps again, type, it says select the type of fixture that we want to patch. Today what we're going to patch is a clay packy Aleda K10 BI. Great light, beam effects, wash lights. Um, you can get a cool kaleidoscope effect with them yet another fantastic product that Acolyting represents. So we're just going to type in K10 into the search bar here, and it shows us Clay Packy. So I go ahead and choose Clay Packy, the Leda K10, and then I'm going to find <coughs> the standard mode, which is right down there. So I have my light selected that I'm going to patch. I'm, to, I'm OK, so I press the OK key. It takes us back into the window again, where I just keep following along. Quantity, this is how many fixtures we're going to patch. We're actually going to patch two fixtures, so I'm going to put in a two. The ID, the fixture number that we want to call these up by, the first one's going to start at one, which is great. Name, what we're going to actually label those in our fixture sheet, and patch, where are these actually addressed. Well, I have these patched in the fourth universe, so I'm going to say 4.1. Double check, make sure you entered all your information in correctly. We're good, so I'm going to press OK. That takes me back into the patch screen where I see my two fixtures have been patched, the address has been automatically incremented for me, and I'm good to go. So once I'm done, I'm going to hit that button that says done, and it says, do you want to apply your changes? Yes, I want to apply my changes. And that's it. We're patched and ready to go. Now, just a little kind of overview of what we have on our screens here. This screen here is my main control monitor, so it's going to change based on what I enter into the desk. Right now, it's showing me my fixture sheet where I see my two fixtures in the patch. I can select those fixtures very easily just by tapping them on the screen. I could deselect them by tapping them again. I could lasso them. I could lasso them to deselect. Or I could also just type in fixture one and two, please. Always file your commands politely. So I have those lights selected. I'm just going to go ahead and roll up intensity on those lights. Now, over here on the side of the screen, we have our main control for these automated fixtures, which means if I go to position, I get pan and tilt on faders, or of course I can use my program encoders. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt those lights a little bit downstage here on the backstage wall. And if I wanted to, I could pan them around, but I think they're good where they are. Let's say that I want to store that as a position preset. Great. My screen over here, I have a bunch of predefined views, which is fantastic because I don't have to build them. I can walk up to the desk and they're already there. So I'm going to click on presets and ima imagine that, position presets appear. Why? Because I'm in my position control here on my main control screen. That's awesome. I don't have to figure that out. Store position. When I do that, it says label objects. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to use my keyboard since typing upside down is a little difficult. I'm going to label that the wall preset. And I hit enter. Boom. Labeled as wall. Now I'm going to go to color. Say I want to put some color in these lights. Let's go to that act red that we all love. Let's say we're going to store that as a color palette. Once again, store. This screen has already changed to color palettes because I'm in color control. I'm going to click on my color palette window. It actually labeled it for me as red, and it gives me a nice big red color chip because the desk is intuitive. It understands what we're doing. Once again, cutting those corners so that you don't have to figure that out as a user. Maybe we want to change colors a little bit, so we'll go to a nice green. Uh, we'll store that as another color preset. Uh, maybe we'll get a nice blue, and we'll store that. How about that red, green, blue, primary colors? So I've created uh, three color presets and I've created a position preset. Now how do we build the Q stack? I'm going to clear that out. 
This here's my main cue stack. It's for my traditional theatrical programmers where you just need to have a cue stack, a lot of cues to program your show. And that's the desk, that's the cue stack that we're going to be working in today. Very simple to do. I'm going to grab my lights, I'm going to roll up intensity, and say that's the first cue of our show. Fantastic. I'm just going to say store Q1. And notice as soon as I hit the Q key, this window changed and showed me a cue list. It's that user-guided interface I was talking about earlier where it actually guides you through as we type things in the command line. That's fantastic. I hit please to file my command. I've already created Q1. Very simple. And that Q is going to be run here from our main Q stack. Now let's say we want to make those lights red and we're going to put them on the wall preset that we just built a few seconds ago. Great, that's going to be Q2. But Q2, I actually want to put fade time on while I store it. Tell the console what you want to do. I want to store Q2 with a time of three seconds, please. What that does is creates me Q2 on my main Q stack with a three second fade time. How could it be any easier than that? Great, well, let's say now we want to make the lights turn blue and that's going to be our third Q, okay? Instead of me typing in Q3, the desk knows that I'm already building Q1 and Q2. I can actually just say store please and it will build me Q3 on my main Q stack. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the programmer. On these predefined views here, I actually have a view that says Qs and I can see my three Qs that I built right there. Great, let's say I wanna run Q1. I go ahead and hit the go key, Q1 automatically comes on. I hit go for Q2. We have a three second fade over into red and into position. And then I hit go for Q3, I get that uh, next color snap in as well. It's that easy. This Q stack also has some intensity control. So I have an intensity fader as well as I have a cross fader. So if I want to manually cross fade in my cues, I can do that as well. Nice and easy to use. So in those few minutes, I kind of gave you a product overview. Uh, we stored some, we patched some lights, we stored some presets, we stored a couple cues, added a little bit of cue timing. If you want to get more into the nuts and bolts of that, like I said, we will follow up with some technical webinars that you're welcome to attend. The best way to find out those are to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube so you'll know when those webinars are available and you guys can log in and start playing around. Again, Doug Mechanic here with ACT, ACT Lighting. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you guys were able to find a little bit more out about what DOT2 can offer you. And hopefully we'll see you out there in the field using the console. Everybody have a good day. Thanks.